What's going on, family? It's your brother Lawrence here with another episode of A to D. I'm here with my sister Delaney. What up, sis? Hey, you guys. I miss you. It's been a week. <laughs> People are like, you don't miss us. We saw you, right? Uh, <laughs> um, as you know, every uh, every every week we come together to talk about all things that y'all all talk about, but not necessarily talking about well online and offline. But we've been in a series, myth or not series. Is it true? How about you? How about you had to cut off? I mean, it, it was it was catchy, but whatever. Um, but um, you know, th we've been touching on, especially on the heels of us doing the Pursuit of Marriage series. Um, we realize that there are so many longstanding beliefs, assumptions myths so to speak that inform how we view relationships but not just uh romantic relationships family relationships friendships and we thought out of that it was probably helpful for us to kind of uh, highlight them and just unpack them a bit right um with understanding that some are quantitative some are things that we can at least ex and analyze from from a, from an empirical standpoint and some are just more qualitative they're just things that we believe and that we sense um, and so over the past few weeks, we've touched on a number of topics. We're not going to tell you which one happened before or after, because who knows when we drop this. <laughs> um, but uh, this week, we're touching on one um, that, you know, my sister will tee off a bit. But it's this discussion around are black men intimidated by successful black women? And I'll put, I'm putting successful in quotes, as we always do every week, because success is defined differently by different people. But are men intimidated, are black men intimidated by a successful, high-achieving uh, career high achieving black women. Um, this has been a long standing belief, myth, and that's what we're unpacking uh, today. So sis, you have the baton. Let's go. So I always want to start off is that these are statements that are pervasive in our community. And those statements come from experiences, right? However, one person's experience cannot be a truth. Right. That is just your experience, your truth. But it is not to say all black men do this, all black women do this, all men do this, all women do this. So the question when we talk about whether it's a myth or not is not to at all water down someone's actual individualized experience. But the question is, is this something pervasive in the community? Because a lot of us be walking around with one story to reference and think everybody's going to be like this. And that is not the case. So what is my position on the statement? Are black men intimidated by successful black women? Successful in quotation marks. Um, I am going to be as neutral as possible in this. Because I this is one that is not quantitative. And so it's really hard to measure the truth in this. But to me, I do know there is, this is a, this is a common occurrence. I think it is a common occurrence. I do not at all think because something is common that all men do this, but it is the intimidation is rooted in an insecurity. All black men aren't insecure. All men aren't insecure, right? But insecurities are pervasive, not only in the black community, in all communities, in all walks of life. Right. They are insecure people. And those people tend to project those insecurities. Right. So I do think it is very common that a black man might be intimidated by a black successful woman. And that could happen. However, dear black women that I love so dearly that I stand in solidarity. I do also think that there are some black women who do not have the capability to hear criticism, especially if they have accomplished a lot of great things, right? But like I tell you guys all the time, the biggest room in life is the room for improvement. I hold everyone accountable to that, including black women. So we can be very, very good in one area and still have other areas to work on. So I do think there are incidents where a black woman could potentially take something that was supposed to be criticism and label it, oh, he's just intimidated by me. Since he might not be intimidated by you, you may have something you need to work on. We all got stuff to work on. So as a result, this statement, it's a mixed bag for me. It is a mixed bag for me. Those are my initial thoughts. Hmm. I, you know, I, um, so I think my, my lead is, um, I think, 
there's this view of what's common. You know, my, my, my view is that I, I do think that there's been experiences uh, that I think women have had where um, it has been verbally communicated that intimidation or in, uh, insecurity um, is, is an issue. Um, with that said, my, my view on this is that I think it's largely a myth. Um, and I think partly because a lot of the, a lot of, and this is more anecdotal as opposed to data, this is not one of those empirical discussions, um, is just that a lot of these are self-assessed by the women themselves as opposed to verbally from the men. So one, there's already a bias towards whatever that perception and lens is. I think two, just me understanding the nature of men. I think most women would understand, I think if you've ever went down 125th Street in Harlem, for better or for worse, um, men, regardless of whatever their stature is or whatever their place in life, have no problem um, communicating how they view you. I'm saying for better or for worse because we also know, sadly, that those interactions are not always healthy, safe, and great. But I say that to give it in, in, in a view to say um, the confidence level of men is never really, especially when they identify a woman that they find attractive, um, is not dictated by what she does. Now, here's the thing. They don't know what she does when she's walking down the street, but that's partly my point. Uh, we always talk about this, and I say this. For men, a woman's professional success is a bonus. It's a bonus, meaning, yes, men celebrate that. I celebrate, but all the people, all the women in my life are, are successful, educated, professional. My mom has more degrees than my father. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, th that's not a new thing. But what I also saw very clearly is that that's a bonus. But what drew it, it, it's, it's, it's per preceding that guys are going to value other things beyond that. There'll never be a deterrent, especially if you find a woman that he finds physically attractive and, and mutually likes. He's not going to let that go. He's just not. Now, one of the things that we kind of, uh, one of the things that I always talk about and speak to is that there is truth, however, to men feeling depending on where that woman is professionally and just in life saying i want to get my stuff together i don't want to conflate those two because i think sometimes in this conversation those two things are put together as men saying they're intimidated no 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 no. especially if you if you if, if a woman has her stuff together and your guy and your instinct is like i want to make sure that i could take care that i can contribute that i could do what i need to do there are men and i've seen this from even the most thorough of men who are married long time and all that where there was some hesitance or there was a fire under their behinds saying, I need to get my stuff together because this woman is not playing and I need to make sure that I, I am coming up and showing up properly. I think sometimes in this conversation that gets conflated, but I'll kind of start with those initial thoughts and I'll go deeper a little bit later to say, no, from my understanding of how, of na how men prioritize. It is very rarely, I'm not saying there, there's not a, ever in, a, a man who struggles overwhelmingly with insecurity and he's saying, oh, I'm, I'm so into, but in more, more often than not, a man will not pass up or delay a woman that he likes and that likes him, who is attractive to him and is nice and is approachable and is all that good thing. He's not leaving that. And I think those are the cases where sometimes because of rejection, because of the hard truth of that, because I think sometimes when you're professionally accomplished, to your point, Delorne, it's hard for you to not view that you are not getting an A plus in every area of your life. You feel, oh, I'm professionally, then I'm, 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 I qualify, quote unquote. I don't like using that word. I, I'm, I deserve these type of men, and so if these guys don't want me, is it has to be because of them. And these guys are looking at it like, we don't. That, that's just very. I've just never. I haven't heard men ever ever talk about this ever. But that's kind of like my, 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 my beginning. So I think there's a lot, you know, you said a lot. So first, I want to be clear. I don't think women will say that they see these insecurities manifest themselves in the beginning stage. You know, any woman who's been to Vegas knows you can have a good time with anybody. You know, like no one's going to, no one sees your career when you're walking down the street on 125th. Nobody can tell me who I am, what I do, people are gonna shoot their shot. I think women seem see this arise a lot when they want to have serious relationships, right? But no, we no one is delaying unless you have, you know, some social awkward situation. But like you know, you know, at the bar, someone will buy you a drink. Like 
the, like no one cares like a drink regardless of how expensive New York City drinks can be someone will buy you a drink if they want to buy you a drink someone will do this when you want to do that but then when a woman wants to start building with someone right and there is like serious talks right and I'm gonna be honest you can get a drink you can party you can even have sex Right. But when we talk building a relationship, I think that is when women will be like, oh, he's talking about he not ready. He was ready to go to the club with you. He was ready to party with you, do things that are very surface level with you, but did not feel ready to build with you. I think that is when many successful black women will see some of the issues. Right. That is when like, oh, I'm not ready to do this. Oh, I'm not ready for that. Oh, I'm not ready for a relationship like that right now. Da 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 Oh, you moving too fast. I first got to get this done. I first got to get that done. Now, I love what you say. There are certain men. And that's the thing. Just because we are men and we are women, I know we disagree with this. There are some differences, but there's just some human behavior. That means there are some deficiencies people have and they're like, whoa, I got to work hard. I got to work hard. Interesting fact, you guys. Lawrence got on a Peloton bike and he's like, oh, when I do Peloton classes, I got to be at least top three. And I was like, bruh, I just be trying to like do a few calories and get over with, right? Because different personality types respond differently. So some people see a deficiency that is a barrier and they are motivated to fit, like to get that gap, to get to wherever they need to get to meet someone. And some people are going to see that gap and be like, man, she's too much for me. Regardless if you're a man, certain people are motivated certain way. That's a human behavior thing. And that's something when you're like, well, um, you understand the nature of men. Of course you do. Lawrence you are a man but you are also a particular man there are a lot of nuances about you that cannot allow you to speak for the whole group and not to say that we any man could speak for the whole group but you have a very 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 interesting personality type that is no play makes you the best co-host like you're serious you have a goal you're going to achieve that goal but that is not every man that's not every human Right. There is something I talk about all the time. People's to do list often creates paralysis. It is a common symptom to be overwhelmed with the stuff you have to do. So I'm not surprised, even though I am holding my sisters accountable because some of them are an issue. I am not surprised that a human will see another human who so surpassed them and be like, bruh. Right. I had a homeboy who said, well, it doesn't it doesn't bother him because he's like, well, I usually make more money than than anybody right and I was like okay that bet you do usually make you make a lot of money so these type of things you can't you know and you've been making it for a while you wouldn't have those issues but there are certain men who didn't go to college who didn't do this whose woman will all like you know that woman will always make more there's nothing for them to go and try to fix the gap right they're not they're not college type or whatever or whatever the case may be, they might just be passionate to be a teacher and serve their community, you know what I mean? And they'll never make more, and they just need to be comfortable in that type of dynamic, and every man is not. And that is so it's not surprising. Now, don't get me wrong. There are women who struggle, just like I said, just like you agreed, with rejection and are therefore writing off something that is constructive criticism, and they're writing, oh, oh, he can't handle me. That is also true, right? Because the thing is with insecurities, inability to be overwhelmed by a to-do list, that is not exclusive to men or women. And I know we talk a lot about women being unable to deal with rejection. And I'm telling you, women are regularly being rejected. Um, and I know that's something we don't agree with. I'll pass the mic to you. No, yeah, I think I think it was really helpful that you said this because I think part of the challenge is that there's conflation happening, and 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 there's a there's a a a a speed at which we call something intimidation. What you described was not intimidation. When you described, okay, when it comes to the commitment part, then it's I'm not ready, I'm not sure, this is not what I want, blah blah blah. You have to fill in the blank about why he's not ready. And I think that's part of the, that's part of it. It's very, it's actually self, it almost kind of amplifies yourself by saying that someone is intimidated by you because you're placing yourself in a position as someone who is intimidating because you're uplifting your accomplishments and where you are. 
it's a bit somewhat self-aggrandizing, right? It's a, but for a guy who is not committed, that is, commitment has been here since the beginning of time. But did you, well, based on what you describe, you still describe a scenario where somehow that guy had sexual access to that woman. That guy was still getting to know, still doing those things. And again, when I view this, sometimes you go into a situation where, you know, like, again, I put mutual accountability there, right? Like, why are you building with a guy at that level who's not sure? Like, what well, you know, and, and, and that's a whole other conversation about why you're doing that before a commitment. But then, but that's not necessarily this guy's intimidated by you. This guy may just not be ready for commitment. This guy may have just been looking for a good time and you miss you misread it. Or maybe you guys started out, as we hear a lot, you started off having games and now you caught feelings or maybe he caught feelings. And then now you're like, you want to move forward. And it's kind of like, nah, nah, mm, 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 mm. That's a commitment thing. That's not an intimidation thing. And so part of my, uh, part of what I'm saying is that I think I agree that that happens. What you're describing, I, I could validate that and say, yo, I, I'm, I've heard that happen. But that's not intimidation. Maybe in some cases it may be intimidation, but I'm saying that to jump and co equate that to intimidation is partly why I'm saying that this is partly a myth because it actually feels good to say it's intimidation, right? But the fact is a guy not being willing to commit could have a zillion reasons why he doesn't want to commit. Maybe he just doesn't want to commit. He wants to be, keep playing the field. It had nothing to do with you and him being intimidated by you. He just maybe wants other women. And again, I'm not speaking on behalf of or like on behalf of that uh, a club or, or of, of men like that. I'm just saying is that you can't jump to that conclusion that it's about intimidation if a guy is not really willing to commit or got not not willing to do that. That's a whole other conversation, right? You know, which part and then you have to also too think about the type of men you're dealing with, right? And again, so I think that's partly the, this conversation you're saying when you you brought the last point, which is about, um, you know, some of those guys are who are who don't necessarily have the same background. But the, I'm just would be clear with that woman. I'm like, because I know we talked about this and do got nice guys finish last for both men and women. Like, what type of dudes are you dealing with, right? <laughs> you know, like I'm not saying that this a bad thing. I'm just saying that uh, it, I when I talk about guys, I'm not saying that I represent, right? I'm a broken man who knows God, and that somehow gives me some sense of confidence that I could walk through life in spite of my issues. Nothing more than that. Everything else could be taken away from me. Everything else by the grace of God. But my sense is about the difference between men is just talking about, by and large, with, with anomalies in place, by and large, what do guys lead with and what do they seek? And part of, you know, part of the, the conclusion I don't want to draw is that I'll, I'll, I'll kind of I'll close here. We talked about this in one of the episodes where we, we, we noted that a lot of times, sometimes we conflate um, the interest based on our class and our social circle. So because guys are thinking, is she attractive? As waiting, we happen to go to the same school and we're at party saying, oh, so I'm, we're dealing with the same types of personalities and uh, ambitious people, right? For that guy, it, that didn't play so much into it. They just happen to be in the same peace they happen to be in the same you know like the social circle but if you take those social circles away you drop somebody in a city you'll hear women looking for i'm trying to find an eligible man you'll hear the conversation that we heard i'm trying to find me a six-figure man you never hear a man saying i'm trying to find me a six-figure woman no you hear that 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 coin that term came from women Six figure, this, this, this. Guys are not guys. Guys want to be six figure, but they're not looking for women based on that. And that's the reason why I'm saying that when it, if you're using specifically, because I affirmed your point around lack of commitment in that scenario, right? But if you're talking specifically about I'm intimidated by her success, I don't conflate a guy saying I want to have my stuff together and delay. I don't conflate a guy who doesn't want to commit with intimidation. That's just my point is that you can't conflate the two. And that's probably perhaps where we'll disagree. You can't conflate those two things and call it intimidation. So the problem is, I, first of all, I want to say that I hear you. And I think there's a lot of truth to what you said. And I think the thing I'm, the thing is when a man exits, I think it's really good. We are not conflating the two. When he exits, I think he'll say anything to get out. Right? He just want to get out. I'll say, I mean, I know if I want to exit the situation, I will say anything. I mean, there are people who prefer to Irish exit and ghost. So, 
And there are statements being made. That's the thing. And I think they could be excuses. But let me step back. Before I go about, you said women are filling in the blanks. Okay. And you were like, not necessarily. Right. But here's the thing. If women are filling in the blanks, you said they could be a zillion reasons why a person doesn't want to commit. That means in there could be intimidation. It doesn't mean that I hear you say, Delorney, just because the person doesn't want co to commit, you cannot, women cannot automatically say that is intimidation. A hundred percent. I hear you. It makes like, he, he, did he tell you he was intimidated, sis? Like, I hear you. But you cannot say that, no, he not intimidated. It's a zillion reasons, but intimidation, I'm not giving you that one. We don't know. I think you're right. I would agree with you. Just like we cannot quantify this number. Just like I agree with you, women cannot automatically say just because he left means he's intimidated. He could have just not once you wanted a good time. You caught feelings. I hear you and agree with you. But people would be like, well, I need to go back to school. I feel like you're you're so advanced in your career already. Men be saying, hey, honey. Anything. I mean, but like when you want to get out of a situation, I as a public defender will tell you I have heard it all to get out of certain situations. So it is human nature to say stuff. And maybe I agree with you. Women shouldn't take that and automatically mean the person is intimidated by you. I hear you, Lawrence, and I agree with you. But what I am saying is that this statement is rooted, I think, in brokenness. And you are saying, Delorney, women struggle with rejection, so they created a narrative to self-aggrandize themselves. I hear you. So hear you so well, I can play it back. <laughs> but I am telling you that that statement is like, well, you know, again, the equation is women. You guys have a problem. You guys made up the story. You guys are wrong. And I think they might overutilize it, which is why I said, uh, this is a mixed bag for me. I'm not going around saying this is fact. This is fact. I didn't leave with that. I led with, I think this is a mixed bag. I do think it's rooted on trauma. Everybody projecting stuff on everybody, right? I do hear you. And I love something you said about mutual accountability. Like, if he ain't together, he ain't gonna be together. Let him go. Just like, let him go. Whatever he tells you, who cares? Let him go. Like, that's his business. That's his story. Let him stick with it. That has nothing to do with you. But I do want to hear, I do, I want you to know that I'm, I know there's a woman watching this who would be like, well, it's not like there's a whole bunch of six figure nigga, uh, six figure men around. <laughs> and I want to tell you that six figures is not something created by women. It is literally the numbers in a person's, you know, balance account or how much they earn it is six numbers you know my point. and men and and the point is men like to be you know certain men you know certain men just want to be happy not really just want y'all to be happy but some men ain't to be in the six-figure club right they're not looking for a six-figure woman they but they want to be a six-figure man they want to earn this much money they want to make money they haven't seen growing up or if they see it they want to match it so I just want to be clear that I hear you. And I think there's some truth to what you're saying, right? I started off saying this is a mixed bag. There's not a lot of like pulling me one side, but I'm not going to let you say that there are intimidating men who are projecting stuff and whatever. And there's absolutely no truth to this statement and to these experiences, right? Like there's a zillion reasons, but this one ain't one. Like, no, it's a blank. Just like you said, people are filling in the blanks. Some men are filling it up, filling it in for themselves. Who knows if it's the truth or not, okay? Like you said, commitment has always been a problem long before, but I do think this occurrence is happening. And I think it's because women may not be matching their energy. That also could be a thing, right? They don't want to be lonely, so they put somebody in and then they can prop them up and you can't prop up nobody. They don't want to stand. They don't want to be there. They don't want to be there. So I hear all this stuff and I see a lot of truth to it. I just want to like... That's my spiel, and I think, you know, we can tie this up. Yeah, I, I think uh, Jack Nicholson, he's one of my favorite actors of all time, and one of my favorite movies of all time, A Few Good Men. Oh, I'm speaking to an attorney. He, he, he sat up there, <laughs> and, and Tom Cruise was, was grilling him. Tom Cruise was just like, okay, so let me look at that log book, and he's walking back and forth. Everybody knows this. I don't have to play this back. And he said, he said I want the truth. He's like, you can't handle the truth. <laughs>
and I had a conversation when I was in, uh, when I was uh, you know having to 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 to, to go stealth uh, a couple weeks ago um, around. The reality is that I think as human beings, what I'll offer is that we struggle with the truth. We can't handle the truth, right? Because even in the scenario that you even paint, if a guy's just like, you know, like, why did he leave? What if he said like, yeah, in that scenario, you guys, you know where I stand on stuff like that. A guy just said, yeah, I just want to sleep with you. I got a little bit tired of it. And I thought that commitment was a little bit too much. And I'm still kind of trying to play the field. Cool. You good with that? Everybody on the back end said, I just wish the person will tell you the truth, but all the time. Or do I look, do I, do I, do I look fat in this dress? Hey, man, you know, like, how am I looking? Is my hair short? Cut at the ball? Blah, blah, blah. All day, people lie because they are counting for people's feelings. And now if there's a perception, right, from brothers of that, you know, if their experience has been women can't really handle me saying that, right, that's going to be the disposition. So I always use the second piece, which is uh, typically I bring this up when people talk about distance. And I do this, I've done this since I was 22 years old with brothers, man. And it always, it's brothers and sisters. And they'd be like, yo, man, I'm struggling with distance, you know, whether or not I'm still trying to maintain this and da, da, da. And I call it the Halle Berry test to brothers. I'm like, and, and you guys put all the extracurricular off the Halle Berry test or Beyonce. Let's call it Beyonce. I say, if Beyonce moved from Jersey to LA, would you break up with her? They'd be like, heck no. I'm like. So I'm saying that I'm like, so, I'm, so anytime people talk about distance, I'm like, no, brother, it's because you're not committed enough. Because for anyone, if you're really like that person, I say similarly, when it comes to the reason why I could say the probability, it's not every situation that, uh, that you paint when you talk about someone filling it in. The probability is based on factors. And I'm saying, because I know the nature of men generally, meaning I believe that men and women are different at a foundation. I know many people don't believe that and think socialization, if you take away socialization, everybody's the same. No, I believe God designed us differently in their implications, it shows up differently. Because men are lead with are, are on that visual, or lead with I'm trying to have peace, men want cooperation, men want peace. They will literally jump past the most successful women and go, go to the local mart to find somebody because that's how much men and women don't understand that. So when I say that, knowing that's the men's nature, Knowing the, from the what I call the test that I'm talking about in terms of what men will prioritize, and they're not going to throw away a woman of their dreams just because they don't have their stuff. They're going to do. They're going to kill themselves to get their stuff together to not lose that woman. I would say, not saying that there's not a proportion of them that uh, exist. What I'm saying is that by and large, since this is about myth or not. I have to. I come with an answer. I'm not going to cop out and be like, nah. You know, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. I'm saying it's a myth because of all of those factors of men's nature. They're not going to let go of the woman of their dreams because of that. A lot of times, typically in these cases, it's because, and I'm putting this on the men, some, they are not honest. Many of them are not honest about the reasons in communicating that. So I can understand how women fill it in if a man is not accountable enough. I don't want to use the word man enough, but people probably will hear it like that accountable enough and adult enough to be honest with this woman. So I'm putting men on that, right? Women shouldn't be filling these things in if men were very clear and honest. And I'm as though we have compassion that men have to, some, some men have to walk on eggshells to and how they deliver to not to account for her feelings. I can't, I can't um, fault m many women for filling in the, that point. But it's hard for in those cases where a guy's like, I'm, I realize it's an attribute of her I don't like, right? Um, it, it, it's easier to kind of exit stage up to your point. And so that's my, my only point here. I think overall, as human beings, we can't handle the truth, even though we say we want it. I think it's not even what the truth that we receive from people. It's the truth we receive for ourselves, which is why issues of alcoholism, issues of stuff, it takes that person fully owning that it's an issue before they can do anything. And even for something that is killing someone, literally their body from the inside out, it takes them that so much time to just accept the truth. How much more would someone struggle with something interpersonal like that? Two, I think I put accountability on men who I think with best intentions are trying to navigate what we perceive and the women will resist this, navigating the, how this she will feel as a result of what he says. And sometimes men are not honest. And because of that, it leads many women to filling this in. Three, I think it's a very charitable conclusion for a woman to say it's intimidation because it keeps her up. I'm not saying all the case, but I'm saying it's a very charitable conclusion. It keeps face. It shaves face. Oh, he was intimidated. Look at all the stuff I have.
but I'm concluding with by and large, this is why the survey that we even looked at a couple weeks ago when it talks about how so many women, particularly the professional women, are so off base about what men prioritize. I think in general, women don't know what men care about or prioritize. So because of that, it doesn't surprise me that many women will draw that conclusion versus maybe evaluating and saying, okay, let me ask him. And if I'm here, if a woman says that a guy said that to her, I will, no one could ever knock that. But if all these cases, many of these cases, these women are just perceiving it themselves, I would say that I'm, I'm going to have a healthy suspicion about that. And I would say based on my notion of men, if a man is finding the woman of his dreams, he either is going to get his stuff together. He's not going to leave and leave you alone. No man who is an adult, he's not going to do that. But if you're dealing with a man who is, quote unquote, on a level, uh, on, I don't even like to use the word. If you're dealing with a certain man who it was all recreational and now you want to switch, I just don't think that's good data. So again, I'm just brother, brother to sisters. I'm saying this. If you're concluding that because you're filling in, I'm saying if you're a betting person, I think it's highly likely that is not the case. It may be something that he did not like and he did not share it. And that and both things can be true. And that's what I'm just I'm trying to say this. <laughs> it's a charitable conclusion to say that men are intimidated. It keeps you up. It, it puts him down. So I recently saw a very interesting quote that says there are a lot of broken children in adult bodies. And I say that because Lawrence has a tendency to think that women are naive and lack self-reflection and self-aggrandize and therefore create narratives to protect their egos, to protect their feelings because they struggle with rejection. Um, I summarize it really well because I hear it all the time, you guys. But I want to say that women, yes, we are, many of us, struggling with that broken child in an adult's body. But the problem is Lawrence started off this show in his one of his responses talking about self-assessment. Self-assessment is an issue men struggle with too, right? The man that Lawrence is describing is like phenomenal women. You guys hear all these like strength and courage and it's not gonna, it's gonna fight first. That is phenomenal. That would be a whole healed individual. And I am rooting that I only encounter whole healed individuals. But that person has to get there. And Lawrence always talks about, well, generally speaking, Lawrence doesn't realize how of an anomaly he is sometimes. You know, um, he doesn't. Lawrence, keep your head still. <laughs> I know, I'm this sorry, I'm is like, what. For me. But go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> um. And, and therefore the people around him are of certain nature and the people around those people are of certain nature, you know? It's just not like, you know, just know, I don't think all black women are a monolithic group. All educated black women are not all the same. Lawrence cannot continuously to speak about a certain subgroup of black men. And I'm not saying all black men are broken. I'm not saying all women are broken. I'm not even like, I'm not here to tell people that situation. But the point is, there are a lot of her children in adult bodies. And as a result, we live in a society where people lack self-reflection and self-assessment. You cannot be responsible for those people, but you need to be aware that they are out there. Make sure you do the work so you are not one of those people. And my position, the reason why I have a hard time with this statement is because it is a statement rooted in the brokenness of people. Intimidation, insecurities, these are not natural things, right? You know, I do think that successful women, everybody, every person tends to have blind spots. Blind spots are not only exclusive to successful people. People struggle with blinders, blind spots in areas. That's why it's important that you recognize when you are not able to hear criticism and decipher what is good and what is what is good advice that you need to work on and what is projection. That is something that requires wholeness and self-awareness in order to do. That is all I have to say about what Lauren says. I don't disagree with it. Like, hello, I hope everybody think I'm Beyonce and is going to travel from New Jersey to <laughs> California for me. 
Okay? Let me just go ahead and put that on the record. <laughs> Everybody. Because you're not seeing it. That's it. That's y'all, it. Y'all, y'all, That's it. <laughs> y'all can use it royalty free. I think we're coming up on our time, but my sister summarized it well. Um, I would say that I agree with her. Um, I also will be very, very clear because I try to put the vegetables behind the candy a lot when I, when I speak about this and not pepper people over the head. But the reality is, to your point, is we're not all going to, we're, we're not going to be healed on this side of glory. We're always going to have a, a, a limp in our step figuratively speaking, men and women. And I think part of why I think these conversations are helpful is that it doesn't mean that you will fix everything or know all the blind spots, but having a willingness, men and women, I agree, to hear and be open to exploring for the sake of understanding and coming together and for you meeting the goals that you want. It's helpful because I think the implications of this are real. Like if you're not getting data feedback, like if you're in a work context or anything, you'll, you'll just never know if there's anything that you could correct. And so I think as men, I think hearing that and, and actually doing the introspection and hearing, but also women and hearing and saying, oh, if the past three people, I say they're intimidated by me, let me consider what it would look like if it, if it was not the case. And what are the changes and things I may make around that? So I just wanna be clear that I have no view that anyone is gonna be healed and hold before they leave this place. What I do think is that the hum I always say this, the humbler you are, the more successful you'll be in relationships, period. If you are like, I know everything, I'm good, da, 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 men and women, be clear. If you're like, I know everything, I'm good, I know everything, da, 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 you can't tell me nothing. Best of luck to you, fam, right? And so I, I hear that and I appreciate that. But I think we've covered a good amount. We've covered a good amount of ground. We did movie quotes and all this stuff like that. Um, and so y'all, you know, I, I, I like to pass off the baton to the close sis. We're closing. Go ahead. <laughs> so you guys, see you guys next week, but before subscribe below, please, please subscribe. So you guys can, you know, see when the next video is happening. Peace. Peace. Bye.